So today I am here in Charlestown, Massachusetts at a place that has over 170 years of military history alone. And its first employees were carpenters and sail riggers. And its last employees were welders and electricians and pipe fitters, just to name a few. Today, I am at the former Charlestown Naval Shipyard. geographical ground alone had already had so much history on it. Now, back in the days of the American Revolution, in the very early days of the American Revolution, the British that were in Boston here rode across the Charles River, which is what you see behind me, to, to land their troops here, which in that direction, which I know you can't see, but in that direction over there, they ferried their troops from Boston across the Charles River over here to Charlestown to land troops to fight the uh, Patriot militiamen that had seized control of what was Breed's, known as Breed's Hill. Today is now known as the Battle of Bunker Hill. The Charlestown Naval Shipyard was established in 1800, or it might have been 1801, but 1800, and it was uh, officially decommissioned or shut down as a federal naval, naval shipyard in 1974. And the preamble that led to its establishment in 1800 was that in 1794, Congress passed the Navy Act, which essentially established the US Navy. It also commissioned six heavy frigates to be built. The legislation was suggested, if you will, by none other than President Washington. And now shortly after the Naval Act passed in 1794, I believe, in 1800, six years later, the Charlestown Naval Shipyard was officially opened. Now at the Charlestown Naval Shipyards, at the peak of its size, for as far as employees and geographical size, the Charleston Naval Shipyard became 130 acres big, had over 50,000 employees, had three separate dry docks, and it had its own railway system, which pretty neat. We're gonna check out one of the things that used to use that railway system every day. Now, one of the things that would have utilized the shipyard's very own rail system would have been, obviously, its own cranes. Now this crane here behind me is uh, authentic to say the least. This is actually one of the, it's the only crane that survived that time period. And I just can't imagine all the things that those crane operators would have lifted, especially through World War II, you know what I mean? So the fact that they still have one of these cranes here is uh, just a pretty cool way that they're trying to preserve the history here at the Charlestown Naval Shipyard. And now, there is actually another U.S. Naval vessel here at the Charlestown Naval Shipyard. And she's over 200 years old. And the really cool thing is that she's still an active warship for the United States Navy. And that is the USS Constitution. The USS Constitution was the last of the original six frigates that were ordered and built by the passing of the 1794 Naval Act. That is one of the nation's first dry docks. That is the original house or the original building that would have housed all the steam pumps that would have controlled the water level in dry dock one. And one of the really cool things about this dry dock is that it is still in use today for the USS Cassidy Young and the USS Constitution whenever they need to be put in dry dock for, for maintenance or sometimes for an overhaul. And I believe the most recent time one of those ships was in dry dock one was 2016. The USS Constitution was in this dry dock. So it, that's pretty Now neat. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that in 1917, this Navy Yard officially welcomed women into their workforce and the first women to work here at the shipyard 
were the trailblazers for the thousands of women that would follow their footsteps come World War II, where in fact, during World War II, women made up as high as 20% of the Navy Yard's workforce. Yep, the famous Rosie the Riveter became one of the most popular symbols of World War II on America's home front. It was the symbol of the millions of women who proved that they could do a quote unquote man's job, not only well, but in certain, certain cases, better. Officers' quarters that the naval officers would have stayed at when the shipyard was open. It's history, 174 year history. It built over 200 ships for the U.S. Navy and over half of those 200 ships were built right during World War II. I'm gonna mention just one of them because the, the timeline that I'm here versus when the ship is in happens to match up perfectly. USS Ralph Talbot was christened here 86 years ago yesterday by, his, by Mrs. Mary Talbot, who is the mother of Ralph Talbot, who the ship's named after. Her son was a World War I Medal of Honor winner. He was a pilot and he actually died in a plane crash about a few weeks before the World War I armistice was signed. Just very quickly here. Would go on to serve in the Pacific Theater and would find itself smack dab in the middle of one of the Battle of Sabo Island. On August 8, 1942, in the very early morning hours, the USS Ralph Tabit was attacked by more than 40 Japanese torpedo planes. Around 2.20 a.m. on the morning of August 9th, the Talbot sighted a Japanese cruiser on a port side and exchanged gunfire with that ship. Four shots at the Talbot hit home and the ship suffered near fatal damage. Now here at the Navy Yard Visitor Center, they have a few exhibits inside that we're going to go in and check out. That is some camouflage paint job. that spike in World War II, it just wouldn't have been possible without the Rosie the Riveters standing behind the men and women who were overseas fighting. Oh yes, good old war propaganda. That is just one link of that chain. Really the only question I have right now is how long did it take them to make all that? known I think that physical exercise can release endorphins and also decrease stress levels which is why there were Navy Yard teams in baseball and bowling. And by the looks of this it looks like every shop here in the yard won this trophy at least once. Pretty much wraps up my time here in Charlestown Mass. I will be back but if you're in the area if you're in Boston and you enjoy history and you enjoy sightseeing come on down here and check this place out here. But uh, as for me I am back on the run and I'll see you guys next week at the same time, same channel. Yep, safety never takes a day off. <laughs>